Purple Eagles Weekly is brought to you by Ant Pro Sports Elite Team Gear. Wendy's Old Fashioned Hamburgers. Seat Baldo Ford in Niagara Falls. Crown Plaza Hotel Niagara Falls, the official hotel of Niagara Athletics. Rainbow Transportation, the official motor carrier of Niagara Athletics. And by Pepsi. Good evening and welcome to Purple Eagles Weekly, the weekly show here on Time Warner Cable Sportsnet that keeps you up to date on NU Athletics. A big show coming your way tonight. We'll check in with hockey, basketball, and the women's volleyball team, the back-to-back -back MAC champs. We'll speak with head coach Susan Clements as well as Michelle James from the women's volleyball team. In men's hockey, we'll talk to Brian Haychick and Paul Zanette. But we'll start the show tonight with the men's basketball team and with senior guard Anthony Nelson, the only senior on the team this year. Yep. What has that been like to be, to go from over the course of your Niagara career, you go from the guy who is coming up the ranks to being the senior, not just the senior, but the only one. Um, it's it's, it's a very weird feeling. Um, I, I was I was I was groomed for this position though coming up. Like as a freshman, I had Stanley Sharon who were the only seniors. June, as a sophomore, I had Benson who was the only senior. And last year, we had four seniors that graduated. And I mean, I, I was ready for the for, for the position, but it's, it's it's different though, just having everyone else look up to you now. But uh, I was ready for it. Do you notice guys coming and asking you questions more than, than in the past? Oh, yes, yes, definitely. Um, from every aspect, it's from the weight room, they're asking me questions, um, from conditioning when we first got here, um, to things on the court, you know, just every little thing from plays and, and even <laughs> how, to, how to work around things and get the easy way out, but I, I don't tell them things <laughs> like that. <laughs> Is there any sort of question how to live life as a college basketball player, how to balance school, how to balance practice. I mean, you guys are obviously busy being st student athletes, so how, much of the, how many of the questions are lifestyle kind of questions like that? Um, a lot of times they ask me questions like, how, do you, how did you end up only taking one class this semester? <laughs> <laughs> Which is something like, because and, and basically it's just all about time management and you know, just getting things done in the classroom. Because you know, as coming in as a freshman, Work was doing classes is something that I like to do, but it's something I have to do, and I get, I do it well. So I just ba balance out my time, and I only have one class this senior in my last semester, and they just trying to figure out how they can get to that position. Well, on the court, obviously a leader, you're you're a senior and lead the nation in steals per game. Do you feel like it's part of your job now that you're a senior also to really? be an example on the court in terms of work ethic and in practice and making sure that you're elevating the other players around you? Yeah, most definitely because um, like when, whenever I, I think I bring the 100% the to practice, they bring 100% to practice. I mean, everyone has their off days, you know, it, it happens in sports, but like when, when I'm not up to, uh, up and upbeat for practice, you could tell on, on the other players' faces, like they're not going 100%, but when I'm giving everything I have, then they're following my lead and getting the job done. Talked to Coach Joe Mahalik last week about this very issue, about you being a senior and how much you're, you're embracing that role. It's coming in a little bit different of a season. Last year, you guys were out to one of the best seasons in, in program history, so many wins. This year, it's been a little bit of a struggle with a young team. So how has it been different for you dealing with the new responsibility and the new result that has kind of come with it? It's, it's tough because I've never had this many losses in my career. I mean, it's, and it's been, and every season has ups and downs, just this one has been, had more downs than up. But um, I mean, it's, it's tough. And I tell those guys to keep their heads up because, you know, tough times don't last long, you know. And I, I think, you know, coming into the, to the, to the last part of the, the MAC season and going into the MAC tournament, I feel that we're getting stronger as a team and we're getting better. And those young guys are really starting to grasp and see what the coaches are talking about. And we're playing harder and it's showing as we play the last two, top two teams in the MAC this past week and we play really well. And I think that it's helped us and it's going to boost us for this last couple of weeks. And do you think once you graduate, maybe you'll even look back at what this group of guys does once you're gone and you'll be able to take some responsibility from that? Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, I think that these guys are really going to take this season and, and use it and use it to, to get better from it. You know, like we don't want to go back to having a season like we just had. We're only going to get better from here, and I think they're going to be good next year. Well, number years. one in steals per game and for program history, you're chasing down assists and steals. What would it mean to be all-time leader in those categories. <laughs> it didn't mean a lot to me because Niagara's it's got, a, it's, it's, got a, it's got a rich history with guys like Calvin Murphy and Hubie Brown coming through the program. Um, and guys like Juan Mendez, Sharon Fisher, Tyrone Lewis. 
And Alvin Cruz is who I'm chasing for the assist record, who is one of the best point guards that ever come through the program. It'll it, it mean a lot to, to break records that those guys have set. Well, best of luck for the rest of the season. Keep up the good, luck, the good work and uh, good luck leading the, uh, the young guys as you go forward in your Niagara career. Thank you. Thanks right. for having me. Senior guard Anthony Nelson here on Purple Eagles Weekly. We'll come back and check in with the men's hockey team, Brian Hachik and Paul Zanet, two of the leading scorers in the nation here on Purple Eagles Weekly. Back on Purple Eagles Weekly, we'll check in with the men's hockey team, which is currently in second place in Atlantic hockey, two games in hand and four points behind RIT. And joining us are two of the leading point men for the Purple Eagles. We've got Paul Zanette and Brian Hachik. Guys, thanks for being here. And um, I, I don't know where to start. It's been, it's been a crazy season, I, I, I think, because going in, Coach Burkholder told me he wasn't sure where the scoring would come from. And a lot of it's come from you two, 21 goals apiece. So you guys are pretty even. Whoever wants to start, what's, what's happened this year? We got this right. Uh, well, we knew coming in, you know, we, uh, we didn't have too many uh, huge point guys coming back. Um, and we knew we talked over the summer, and we knew we'd have to kind of, you know, just lead the way and uh, take charge. And we've kind of just, you know, we just try to help the team. And this year we've, we've been the ones getting the goals. You know, we've gotten a lot of help from our line mate, Giancarlo Irio. Uh, freshman Scott Arnold's put up a lot of points too. Um, but, you know, we just kind of figure, you know what, this is our team now. We're seniors, and we need to lead. And you were player of the month in November and two-time player of the week inside the conference. You got off to a crazy start to the year. We're up there leading the nation in goals, still right there near the top of the nation in goals. So as, as I guess one would expect, it kind of flows back and forth between the two of you because you started out so hot. And, Brian, you've been about as good as anybody in college hockey for the last month. Oh, thank you, yeah. How many goals? Ten goals in the last five games? Uh, something like something that. Something like 11, that? 10, 11, yeah. 10, 11. So a three-time player of the week for you. I, I, did you guys even expect this coming in, I guess? Well, I mean, it's you kind of, as seniors, you want to step in and, and you kind of want to take the team by, you know, by the reins and, uh, and lead the way. I mean, you don't really expect it, but uh, you have to prepare for it. You have to uh, you know, work hard all the time, and uh, I think Paul and I do a great job at that. We, uh, we come every day, practice. Uh, work our bags off and uh, kind of lead the way for the guys, and uh, I think we've done a good job thus far. Has it been any different inside Atlantic Hockey? Last year, CHA, you guys are one of four teams. Now, when you look at the standings, it's a much bigger pool of players. So if you're looking at how you stack up in the conference, how many teams you're racing with, has it been different, more fun, just kind of a, a different dynamic? Uh, it's been different. I mean, we, we haven't played a lot of the teams. We had, like It was our first time playing at, uh, American International. It was our first time playing... Uh, Mercyhurst, we we hadn't faced them before, so it was it was kind of cool. You're playing new teams, going to new places, but it's the same mentality. You're you're in a conference, you, you have you have your opponents, and you're all you're all fighting for that those top two spots at least this year for the bye. So we know uh, you know we know we know what we have to do. We know we have to win, and you know it's it's a whole new group of teams. You know, ten new teams we're playing against, new players, but you know it's the same mentality. We just want to win. How much scoreboard watching is there? When you guys, as soon as you guys are off the ice on a Friday and a Saturday, do you want to know immediately what everyone else did? Yeah, definitely, definitely. I mean, we uh, we go home and we check the uh, the sites right away. We uh, we keep tabs because we, we really want to know. And uh, and I think, like Paul said, it's uh, more teams. It's it's going to be more difficult this year. And uh, you know, we really want that uh, buy in the first round. One thing we talked about with Anthony in the first segment about senior leadership. I think you guys do a lot of that on the ice too. Whether it's um, special teams or check. I mean, if you're watching a Niagara hockey game, I think you two are two of the most tireless skaters probably out there, always working. Do you feel like that's just another way outside of point production that you can help the young guys continue to, uh, to mature as hockey players? Absolutely, yeah. You know, Berkey, Berkey likes to stress, you know, lead by example. And that starts, in, that starts in the weight room and then in practice and then in games. And, you know, we, we, like, we work hard. That's what we do. We, during the summers, we train hard. And, you know, over the past, over the past few years, we've, we've come, kind of come into a role of, you know, penalty killing a lot. And, you know, we've gotten used to having, you know, playing a lot of minutes on the penalty kill. And that's kind of built, uh, built I guess you could say, built our stamina. And um, we just try to go out there. I mean, we got some great penalty killers, Dan Bacco, Scott Arnold, you know, just to name a couple that, you know, are coming up, and I guess if, 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 if they're learning from us, that's awesome. That's what we'd like to do. But uh, right now, you know, we're just doing anything to help the team win because uh, this is a huge year. I think Berkey said a phrase to me. Is it called taking ego? 
Is that what it is on a penalty kill? Like you want to you want to take them out of the game because when you can when you can kill off penalties as effectively as you guys did at the at the early part of the season, it kind of takes away any momentum the other team might think they have or, or any chance they think they could score. Yeah, well, I've never heard the uh, expression "taking ego," but <laughs> uh, definitely you want to. It kills momentum for the other team, and uh, you know, especially Paul and I, we have the mindset: if we can get a jump, we'll take it because if you score a short end goal, that's really going to put a damper on the other team's game. But I mean, that's that's not always the mentality. You want to just get the job done, keep the puck out of the net, and it sure can be a momentum swing. And with two games in hand and four points behind RIT, it's a team that's ahead of you guys in the standings, but you did beat them in the one matchup this year. And it's also a team that went to the Frozen Four. So uh, I think if you're looking at this this conference, if you're looking at this race, I mean, sky's the limit, guys? Yeah. I mean, I think we uh, we said from the beginning of the year, before the season started, we looked at our schedule and we thought, you know, the, the last weekend we got home and home with RIT. That's going to be big. And we know we know what they had did last year, you know, went to the Frozen Four. Uh, but we also know what we've done against them. We haven't lost to them in three years, so um, we had a, we had success against them early this year, and now it's us two at the top. You know, Rod Morris is right there, so we can't let any games go and let them catch up. Um, but you know, we're we're focused, we're ready to go, and you know that I think it's going to come down to last weekend, and we're excited because we we have fun playing our IT. And Robert Morris is, uh, as you mentioned, right there. That's you guys play this weekend. So best of luck against Robert Morris Thank and you. Uh, in the Atlantic Hockey Association. Paul Zanet, Brian Haychik here on Purple Eagles Weekly. Coming back, it's the Meet the Coach segment. We'll check in with the back-to-back -back MAC Champs women's volleyball team. That's next on Purple Eagles Weekly here on Time Warner Cable Sports Night. Back here on Purple Eagles Weekly, the Meet the Coach segment. Brought to you by the Crown Plaza in Niagara Falls, the place to meet. And we'll check in with the women's volleyball team and head coach Susan Clements. Back-to-back -back MAC championships. I bet that doesn't get old anytime you hear that, right? <laughs> Not at all. Well, back-to-back -back MAC championships, obviously the, the numbers of what you've done with this team and well, this team's success over the last few years uh, has been something that the university has really obviously jumped right into. What would you attribute it to? What, what has led to this growth of this program? We were able to recruit great kids to come in, a lot of talent, a lot of commitment. And we really worked on the leadership with the girls, and I think that really helped uh, change what they thought was going to be the vision from before to now. When you say work on leadership, what exactly are you doing? Are there leadership exercises? Do you guys do more things as a team? Oh, well, the captains and I, we kind of would meet off campus um, periodically, month to month, and you know, do workbooks, talk about situations, just making sure that, you know, we got everybody going in the right direction, and if we don't, how we can get them back where we want them to go. The numbers of, I want to just get these out there, 25 and 9, school record for most wins, conference wins 17, regular season wins 22, a 19 match win streak, uh, snapped in the NCAA tournament first round by eventual champion Penn State. Games against Penn State, Michigan in the first round, these are, you know, big time programs. What is it? I guess, what do you see out of out of your girls? What does it mean to them to be going to these gigantic stages and, and, and competing on that level? I think it means a great deal to them. I mean, they work really hard. They want to represent, you know, themselves, the university, the program, with, with great effort and respect. And, you know, going into Michigan last year, we didn't perform like we thought we could. And this year we went into Penn State with, a, with that in mind, that we want to perform well, and we really did this time. As a volleyball coach, I mean, you know, we have sometimes on the show, we'll have the telestrator, we'll break down hockey plays, we'll break down basketball plays. What, I guess, what kind of strategy, what kind of positioning, how much work in that regard is there is there for your job? Because people might not watch volleyball the same way in terms mm -hmm. of breaking down videotape. So uh, strategy, positioning, play calling, like what's, how do you balance it all out? Um, I think a lot of what we look at is matchups, you know, who we want um, attacking against which blockers or who do we want digging which hitters and where we want to serve the ball in certain areas to take them out of certain plays and um, we do have play sets that happen when we get an easy ball over the net we call them free ball plays and we want to make sure we have the right one on that's going to put us in a successful situation to terminate quickly so you know Michelle comes in and does a lot of extra work with a film of what we want with when and whom we want her to set and and so it's a lot of work behind the scenes than just going out and playing. You mentioned Michelle James, who's going to join us next segment here on yeah. Purple Eagles Weekly. Setter of the year for Michelle James. Talk about her as a player. How important was she to this team? Setter of the year, obviously a, a big-time accolade that, that goes to her. Yeah, Michelle's a great player. She puts the work in in the weight room, in the gym, in the film room, in the office. I mean, and she's a captain, and she's a great leader. 
She is a tough, a tough kid. I mean, she gets a lot of um, the heat when we're not playing well, and she handles it with uh, with great um, grace. I'll put it that way. But she's a great student. I mean, she's just a well-rounded student athlete. And you know, we brought her in. She was our first uh, recruit we brought here when I got the job. That we knew we had to have a great setter if we wanted to win. And you know, when we were recruiting her, we talked to her about that. This is what we want you to do, and and she accepted that and came in and, and worked really hard to do that. And she's one of three All Mac first team players here. One of three, yeah. Hannah Hendrick, Hannah Hedrick, I'm sorry, and Amanda Wilkin as well. Yeah, those three. Um, you know, Amanda really had a breakout year this year. She um, was a great player last year, but really offensively became a great power for us. I mean, she's one of the tallest players in the conference. And we really um, talked to Michelle about feeding her the ball and worked with Amanda being available to, to get the ball. And, you know, Hannah's just steady. She's always going to show up to play. So you've got three first-teamers and a rookie of the year, too. Rookie of the year, yeah. Rookie of the year. So how about uh, Eileen? Uh, Ellen. Ellen. Ellen, she... Um, I knew coming in that um, was a big hole we needed to fill was on the right side. And I was really excited that she won Rookie of the Year. I thought it was going to be the kid from Siena because she's just running the stats wild. But, I mean, Ellen really gave us a whole different dimension bringing her in. And, and really, when we said her, she could not be stopped. So I'm really excited to see what she's going to be in the future. So three first teamers and a rookie of the year. I'm I'm just going to bust on you a little bit, but is it the players or the coach? You know, <laughs> you, you seem to have some great players out there. It's obviously uh, a marriage of the two. So what do you learn from them? What do they learn from you? How much is the relationship uh, two ways? It's two ways all the way. I mean, every great coach has great players, and that's what it takes to win. And it's molding them together putting the people out there that, that work well together, I think is um, where I come in, just making sure we have the right fit together, and then making sure that they take ownership of what, what they want, but giving them the direction to go. Well, back-to-back -back championships, does more success bring more pressure? I think this season was a lot of pressure. I think next season will just be um, exciting. Hopefully, we'll get a third one. You're on a roll. You can't stop now, right? Yeah. All right. Head coach, Susan Clements of the women's volleyball team, back-to-back -back MAC championships. We'll come back. We're not done with the women's volleyball team. Setter of the year, Michelle James, joins us here on Purple Eagles Weekly. Back here on Purple Eagles Weekly with the back-to-back -back champions of the MAC, the women's volleyball team. We have head coach Susan Clements and junior setter of the year, Michelle James. She mentioned last segment you were the first recruit that she brought in. Yes. So what was that process like? Um, it was a lot of hard work. I mean, I talked to Coach and Assistant Kara, and they both just seemed great players and coaches, and I just really wanted to work with them. And it was a hard decision, but I knew once I saw them and I saw the school, I really wanted to come here. And there was a lot of girls from Cincinnati, too, coming up, and that was also a benefit. So it was a good decision. Well, you won Co-Rookie of the Year in your first year. Mm -hmm. The team won six games, but obviously since then, there's been a huge, huge growth. So what has happened over the course of, of the last two years? I think really we were just meshing well together. It was really hard our freshman year because we were young, you know, inexperienced. But having that year under our belt, it just really helped us to work things out, like get our problems done and communicate better on the court. I think we all developed as players and like in the weight room, we got stronger, our skills are better. It is all around, it came together our well, sophomore year. I asked the coach about you, I'm gonna ask you about her now. How has she changed over the course of the last few seasons? She's been awesome, really. Like we always just work well together. She pushes me a lot, and it really just helped me develop. And assistant coach Kara, they are always just pushing us to do our best, and it really just helps us just become great players. So, three point six eight GPA is tops among all athletics at Niagara, yep. and it's a streak too. So not just back-to-back -back champions on the court, but in the classroom, you guys are doing pretty well too. Yeah, that's uh, three semesters in a row, and that's something we talk about that. That's what we want to be. We want to be top, not only on the court, but, but in everything we do. We want to be the best in the weight room. We want to be the best in the classroom. We want to be the best in the gym. How much do the, do the girls, how much do your teammates, you know, obviously you, you strive for success on the court, but how much is there a community stress put on success in the classroom as well? Something that's obviously very important. Oh, it's definitely important to do it in class too. We have to go to class. We have to pay attention, learn. It just really, our team is just great. We like listen and we are just very, 
we do well at school, and it's just, it helps. It helps us to stay well and focus in the volleyball gym, too. Well, you have the all-time career assists record, and you still have another season to go, so what from here? I mean, you've already got the back-to-back -back championships. What's the next step? I mean, as you're listing out your goals, what will happen next year? What will the goals be listed as? How high will you aim? I think we need to keep developing our skills, and, you know, we're not at our peak performance yet. I think that we can still keep going. I mean, it was awesome winning two years in a row, but. I mean, it's, we're not finished yet. We gotta keep working in the weight room and get strong. Our coach is telling us, and we just gotta keep on working on new skills and new tricks when we play on the court, so that'll come along too. Coach, how about you? What, what will, the, what will the, the ultimate goal be next year? I think we wanna win, um, of course, win the max again, but when we go to the NCAA tournament, we wanna win a set, win a set in the tournament. No MAC team has ever done that. We got really close against Penn State. We were leading 19-17. Um, but we really want to beat some teams in the top 75, so that'll give us a little bit better draw in, in the tournament. And we're, almost, we're short on time, but I want to know, until fall, what happens? Uh, we'll start spring season um, into February, and we'll go for about seven weeks, and we'll play in two tournaments, so we're all year. Well, keep it up. Two in a row. The, uh they're going for the three-peat now. So, coaches and Clements, Michelle James, setter of the year. I want to thank Brian Haycheck and Paul Zanette and Anthony Nelson, senior guard as well. Busy show tonight. We're done. Purple Eagles Weekly, your source for weekly information on NU athletics, exclusively here on Time Warner Cable Sports Net. We'll see you next week.